Hi families, I wanted to share some important facts about Anzac Day and a few reasons why Anzac Day is especially important to me and my family. Why do we have Anzac Day? What's it all about? Uh, it's always on the 25th of April and on Anzac Day we remember all Australians and New Zealanders who fought in various places of warfare or theatres of war to keep us free. Now Anzac is actually a word which is made up of a number of letters which stand for the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. That's where we get the word Anzac from, the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Now Australians have fought at war since the Federation in 1901 in many places. South Africa, China, in World War I, right across the world, in the Russian Civil War, Armenia, World War II, Korea, in Malaya, Borneo, Vietnam, the Persian Gulf, Afghanistan, Iraq, East Timor, and against the Islamic State, and, and that's still happening. Now, war is never a pretty thing. It's destructive and devastating, and Many Australians have given their lives for us and for freedom since Federation. We believe that there's around 102,930 Australians who've been killed in various places of war. 226,060 Australians wounded and over 34,000 Australians taken prisoner of war during those conflicts. It's a very serious matter. When we think of Anzac Day, often we hear the story of Private Simpson. Now, Private Simpson was an Australian who was living during World War I, and he landed with the Australian Infantry Forces, the AIF, at Gallipoli on the 25th of April, 1915. And he, he was there with our Aussie diggers, the fighters there for that conflict. He was a stretcher bearer. He was concerned to bring wounded men who had been uh, hurt in battle, bringing them back away from the site of battle, down to the beach and then onto uh, the hospital ships that were uh, moored just near the area of, of uh, uh, Gallipoli. He carried many wounded soldiers to safety on his donkey and children his donkey's name was Murphy, Murphy the donkey. Now, Private Simpson did this wonderful work of looking after his mates uh, over three to four weeks during the time of conflict. And unfortunately, he was killed on the 19th of May, 1915. So he was not there for very long, but he did great work during the period that he was active as a stretcher bearer with his donkey Murphy. And he was buried at uh, the beach cemetery at Gallipoli. There's a picture of him there. And he's standing there with Murphy. And uh, he's got a, a patient on Murphy, carrying him down to the beach. Now, here at the Australian, here we have a picture of uh, Simpson and his donkey. Uh, this is a statue of him. Uh, which is located at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra. And in fact, uh, uh, quite a number of our students visited that place last term in term one. And here they are just standing around that statue. We had a great time visiting various locations, but the highlight of our trip was going to the War Memorial and learning all about those soldiers who fought for our freedoms. Now I've got an interest in uh, the army. Uh, my dad, Private Jack Harding, was in the Second Eight Field Company. There's a picture of dad on the day he was married. Uh, he was married when he came back from World War II. And uh, there he is, he's looking very bright and chirpy and smiley. But he uh, was uh, fighting in uh, New Guinea. Now here's a map of the world and I've got a red uh, arrow there pointing to where New Guinea is. You can see that there on the right. That's where he was during the war. And there's a closer shot there 
uh, and the arrow showing where uh, Papua New Guinea is and the side, the western side, where sorry, the eastern side where he was fighting. Here's Milne Bay, which was the site of a very, very famous uh, battle, uh, a sea battle, which uh, the Allies did win. Uh, there were many places where, that Dad visited in um, constructing roads and bridges. Uh, wow was one place, of course, Mill Bay, uh, Matapau and uh, other locations. Of course, we also know the very famous Kokoda track uh, in New Guinea where Australians fought very courageously, again, to keep our nation safe. Here we find uh, uh, photos of soldiers up to their ankles in mud in New Guinea, uh, other sites. Uh, soldiers marching through the jungles, crossing rivers. Here we find a man who uh, was wounded and uh, one of the local uh, native men, they were called the Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels uh, by the soldiers because the, they helped men back to safety, just like uh, Private Simpson did in World War I. Uh, and these Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels were very important in helping our wounded back to safety once they left the side of, side of battle. Dad had a number of medals. Now, I've got them here. I'm allowed to wear them on Anzac Day. And um, you'll see on Anzac Day people wearing these medals. And if they won the medals themselves, they will wear those medals on their left hand side, over their heart. And that's very important. Um, if like for myself, I did not go to war, but these are my father's medals. Uh, because I did not earn them myself, I, like many others, wear the medals on the right hand side. So here they are again. Um, and so if, you, if the medals belong to a deceased parent or uncle, you would wear them on the right. If you actually own those medals yourself, uh, they are to be worn on the left. So the medals were the War Medal, the Australian Service Medal, the 1939-45 Star, the Pacific Star, and the Australian Service Medal. Two of those. There's a photo of them. So there's Dad. There he is. He was 92 when that photo was taken. There he is, and notice he's wearing the medals over his heart on the left-hand side. That's at uh, an Anzac Day march, and he was too old to march, so they drove him in a jeep. My Uncle Frank also was in the army. He was fighting not with Dad uh, in New Guinea, but he was over in Libya fighting against the Germans, fighting for freedom there. There's the arrow pointing to Libya. And he was in a group of soldiers that were called the Rats of Tobruk. There's Trabuk there, that arrow is pointing to Trabuk, and there was lots of uh, desert and dry country all through that area. And the Australian soldiers were there um, fighting the Germans, and they were called the Rats of Trabuk because they dug tunnels and uh, dug ditches to uh, protect themselves and to hide there while German tanks drove across the deserts over the top of where our soldiers were hiding. So uh, there's a few of those men digging their trenches, again marching through, and look at that, they've all got picks and shovels, um, again digging trenches and protecting themselves against the German tanks that uh, were very dominant in that area, but thankfully uh, our men prevailed in that very serious battle. Now I wanted to show you this here, This I've got a copy of John's Gospel that was given to all men in World War I, all the, the men and women who were serving in the military forces, the Army, the Navy, and the very junior Air Force in those days. And uh, they each received a copy of John's Gospel. And it said, as you can see, please carry this in your pocket and read it every day. And we tell everybody, our students, our staff, 
uh, our families, it's important to read the Bible every day. But inside, there was a special message from Lord Robert, and I've quoted it here for you to read, and I'll read it out to you. So Lord Robert wrote to all these men and women who served in World War I um, this message. He said, I ask you to put your trust in God. He will watch over you and strengthen you. You will find in this little book guidance when you're in health, comfort when you're in sickness, and strength when you are in adversity. And of course, he was addressing this to men and women who were facing great danger. And he, his advice was, trust God and get on with what you have to do. He will carry you through it, even if you are facing adversity. So Anzac Day is very, very important time where we remember people who have given themselves for us. Now, Jesus referred to this important factor when he said in John's Gospel, he talked about the greatest form of love that you could ever have. And that was this. He said, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And so many people have laid down their lives, even a, a few years of their lives, or even the greatest sacrifice uh, for their friends and families. And so that we, the later generation, could have freedom and live in freedom. That's the greatest love, Jesus said. And that is exactly what Jesus did for us when he laid down his life for us, his friends. So there's a couple of thoughts about why I think Anzac Day is very important. I have family connections to the military, but there's this greater debt of gratitude that I feel toward those men and women who in the past have given so much to protect our present and our future. Anzac Day is an important day. I hope you really enjoy your Anzac Day. Bye for now.